Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog for my multiplayer pirate game. In this one, my goal is to get the inventory system working so that players can carry around items. I ended the last devlog by talking about keeping my code maintainable, and how I needed to do some major cleanup, and over the last week I've spent many hours refactoring almost my entire code base. Luckily for me, nothing at all broke during that entire process, because I'm just really, really good at programming. Seriously, don't mind the massive wall of red errors and the player that's slowly floating into the sky. Okay, okay, I clearly had some things to fix up, and that's now taken care of. While refactoring all my code, I made a few changes to how ticks were being synchronized on the client, and apparently that completely broke my interpolation system. Interpolation is the process of smoothing out transitions between two fixed points, and in the case of most multiplayer games, between moving objects that are controlled by the server, as you don't generally receive a position update for every object every single frame. This ensures that players see things moving as fluidly as possible, instead of some kind of hot stuttery mess. Anyways, after spending a couple hours rethinking and going through my entire interpolation system, since I thought it was fundamentally broken, I came to the conclusion that the code should actually be working. Obviously it wasn't, and that's when I realized that before actually doing the interpolation calculation, I was checking if the object should even be moving in the first place by comparing the position it was coming from with the position of where it was going. If the object isn't supposed to be moving, I do a slightly different calculation to avoid extrapolating the position, or in other words, going too far. What ended up happening was that the player would come to what seemed to be a full stop on the server, despite still moving ever so slightly. Since that caused an extremely small difference between the position updates, this if statement never actually worked as intended, so my code was always extrapolating. That meant that sometimes the object would move past its destination position, and then the system would need to compensate for that mistake and go back the other direction. Then it would go past the destination point again, and sometimes this would go on indefinitely, usually getting more and more extreme, which would cause the terrible spring-like jittering and eventually the object would end up so far away from the world center that Unity simply couldn't handle the massive numbers anymore, which caused the wave of errors. I fixed this whole problem by simply changing the condition in the if statement to check whether the two positions were within about 2 millimeters of each other, instead of checking if they were exactly identical. Yep, you heard that right. One line of code was causing all of those errors. Seriously, who wouldn't love programming? Not only did changing that single line of code prevent the error wave, but in combination with the change I made to the way ticks are synchronized, the interpolated movement is the smoothest it's ever been. With that out of the way, I have one more thing I want to fix before getting to work on the inventory system. My player controller uses a rigid body to calculate movement, and there's one thing that's been bothering me for a while, which is that if you're touching a wall, it can cancel out any vertical momentum you have. I think this is caused by the friction that occurs in the collision between the player and other colliders, particularly when you're trying to move in a direction where a collider is in the way. This basically allows you to stick to walls and hover midair. A quick google search later, and the problem is pretty much solved. Fun fact for those of you that aren't programmers yourselves, Probably about 90% of programming and game development is just knowing what to google when things go wrong. Often you'll find that someone else has spent enough hours suffering from the same mistakes you made that they've already gone to the trouble of asking a question somewhere online, and you can simply browse the buffet of proposed solutions and steal, I mean use, whichever one you like best. Anyways, I basically just added a second capsule collider to the player which is slightly wider and slightly shorter, and I gave it a physics material with zero friction. Since this collider is wider, it's the one that handles the collisions with walls, and since it has no friction, you no longer get stuck on them. Meanwhile, the regular collider is the one that's exposed around the player's feet, so it takes care of collisions with the ground and applies regular friction. Unfortunately, this does mean you can still get stuck in corners when going upstairs, so it's not perfect, although I'm pretty satisfied considering how simple this solution was. So most of the getting stuck issue is solved, but I'll have to deal with stair corners in the future. Maybe I'll just get rid of them entirely when I redesign the ship. Okay, so it's a couple days later now, and I'm happy to report that we have a functioning inventory system, although it is still very basic at the moment. I also ended up implementing storage barrels, which uh, currently still look like this, but we'll get that fixed up soon enough. 
I don't have anything in my inventory at the moment, but why don't we take a peek at what's in this breathtakingly beautiful, handcrafted barrel made of 100% ethically sourced palm wood. Let's see here, we have the ship's hull texture, which is the placeholder for planks, my logo is the placeholder for cannonballs, and would you look at that, a subscribe button. You should totally scroll down and click that, by the way. And while you're there, you might as well obliterate the like button and ring the notification bell too, right? Jokes and like button smashing aside though, clicking on any item in the barrel will automatically transfer it to your inventory, and that obviously works the other way around as well. I don't think I'll make it possible to click on items and pick them up with your mouse, since reordering items in your inventory just won't be necessary, and I want to keep UI as minimal and unintrusive as possible. I've set this up so that items have a different maximum stack size in your inventory than they do in barrels, which should allow me to set up what would basically mimic a weight system. The lower the maximum inventory stack size an item has, the more space it essentially takes up. This does mean that in theory you could have your entire inventory full of cannonballs, but I think that extra flexibility might be nice. Then again, even with a max stack size as low as 1, you'd be able to carry around 20 pieces of food which could be massively overpowered. I'd kind of prefer to stay away from setting hard limits on item amounts in your inventory based on their type, but it may turn out to be necessary after all. If you've got any thoughts or ideas on this, let me know in the comments. This is something I'll need to think about quite a bit, and I'd appreciate some extra opinions. That being said, there's still quite a few more immediate things that I'm going to need to address when it comes to the inventory system. For one thing, the handcrafted barrel made of 100% ethically sourced palm wood will need to be replaced, as the palm trees were unfortunately not organically grown. Also, I haven't done anything to disable my camera controller when you look in a barrel or open your inventory, which means you can still look around. What's even more annoying is that when looking in a barrel, you have to press escape to make the cursor visible, and as soon as you click on a slot, it disappears again. That's a byproduct of how my camera controller works, so that's definitely something I need to fix up. I am still using the old Unity input system, and things are starting to get really messy, so I think this is probably as good a time as any to switch to Unity's new input system. However, that's something I'm going to do in the next devlog, as I do still want to get this video out this weekend, which means I need to get to work on editing. If you enjoyed the video and you're feeling generous, please leave me a comment down below to help boost the YouTube algorithm, and come check out the Discord server. It's a great place to hang out, and that's where I'll be announcing anything related to playtesting when I finally get to that point. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.